Are you trying to get your family used to whole wheat bread and encountering some resistance? A gradual approach might be the answer. Today we're making old-fashioned buttermilk bread. It's soft, it slices nicely for toast and sandwiches, and we're making it in the KitchenAid mixer. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm here to help you create your slice of country living wherever you live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old-fashioned values like gardening and cooking from scratch and modern conveniences that make life easier. Today I am sharing a family treasure, old-fashioned buttermilk bread. This is the recipe that I have baked for more than 25 years and the one that I use to help my children and my husband adapt to whole wheat. See, when I first really understood the benefits of whole grains, I jumped on the bandwagon with both feet. I went to the store and bought a bag of stone ground whole wheat flour and baked my first brick. <laughs> Do you have a similar story? I'd love if you left it in the comments. I would have so much fun reading those. And while you're down there, go ahead and like the video and click subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. When it comes to whole grains, a gradual transition is easier on the baker and the eaters. So we're going to use a sliding scale to determine how much whole wheat flour to use in our buttermilk bread so that your family actually loves the bread. Did I mention how soft it is? By the way, I've created specific videos for the Bosch Universal and the Ancus Room Assistant. So if you own one of those two mixers, you can go right to the video that corresponds with the mixer in your kitchen and learn to make old-fashioned buttermilk bread. And if you haven't yet purchased a heavy-duty mixer for bread, check out my video KitchenAid versus Bosch versus Ancus Room to help you make the best decision. Well, let's get started. The ingredients that we're going to use to make old-fashioned buttermilk bread today include half a cup of melted butter, a quarter cup of honey, two cups of buttermilk, a tablespoon of yeast dissolved in a cup of lukewarm water, two teaspoons salt, a scant half teaspoon of baking soda, and the flour. And the recipe calls for about six cups of flour, so we're going to use that sliding scale that I mentioned earlier to decide how much whole wheat flour and how much white flour to use in our recipe. The total amount of flour called for is around six cups. So if your family is hesitant, to try whole grain bread, I recommend starting with about a quarter to a third whole wheat flour and use the balance as all purpose or bread flour. So in this recipe that would be about a cup and a half to two cups whole wheat flour and then the rest would be white flour. Now if your family is on board and they appreciate the nutty delicious taste of whole wheat flour, especially if you have a grain mill and you're able to produce home milled whole grain flour, then you can go ahead and use all whole wheat flour. You may not need the entire six cups. We'll go through the steps when we make the bread and you'll learn how much flour the dough actually needs. The butter is freshly melted and it's quite warm. So I'm going to add the honey directly to the butter and there's, it's, you can just estimate. No need to be exact. And now I will pour the buttermilk into the butter. And this will help bring the butter down to a temperature that is safe for the yeast. Give it a little stir. And we can add that to our mixing bowl. Now you want to test the mixture and make sure that it is just lukewarm. Good. About 110 degrees if you're using a thermometer, but you don't need to. We know it's safe for the yeast, so we can add the yeast. And we can add the first cup of whole wheat flour. Now let's add the beater and get it started on low speed. And while that's happening, we can add our second cup of whole wheat flour. And we can add 
the salt and the baking soda. Give that a few moments to combine and then we'll begin adding the unbleached all-purpose or bread flour about a half a cup at a time. And I'm keeping it on low speed and just gradually tipping the measuring cup into the bowl. And now I see the dough is starting to leave the sides of the bowl. So that means I am going to slow down on adding less flour. Just a little bit, a tablespoon or two at a time. And give it time to incorporate into the dough. to do now is give the dough a five minute rest. So I will remove the beater and cover it up and set a timer for about five minutes and this allows the sharp edges of the bran to soften so that our dough will be easy to handle. It's time to add the dough hook but before we do I have a special tip to share with you. Have you ever made bread dough and had trouble with the dough climbing up the hook and into the machine? It makes such a mess. I have an easy tip to help prevent that. Before you put the dough hook on, just take a little soft butter on your, on your finger and spread it on the dough hook. Get both the top and bottom side of the collar. And this will keep the dough in the bowl where it belongs. Now we can add it to the machine. And we'll lock the machine and set it on low speed to knead. Now just let your beautiful KitchenAid mixer do the work of kneading. If at any time you notice the machine is struggling or feels hot or sounds like it's slowing down, you'll want to stop the machine to protect it from damage. But with this recipe, it should be just fine. The mixer's been kneading for five minutes. Now it's time to get our hands in the dough. The best way to learn how the dough is developing is to touch it. So we'll unlock and raise the head, and then we're just gonna get our hands right in the bowl. The dough looks shiny, and that's a good thing. Just gonna touch it, and it feels tacky, not overly sticky. And you'll notice there's no dough stuck to my fingers. A nice comparison is to use a post-it note. Just tear off a sheet, touch the tacky strip on it, and then touch the dough. It should feel really similar. So once you have passed that test, then you want to let the dough rest for five minutes, and we will do the window pane test. Now I'm gonna show you a real simple trick to check the gluten development in your bread dough. Oil or moisten your fingertips and reach right in the bowl and just take a small piece and just begin to slowly and gently pull and lift that piece of dough up until it forms a thin membrane that you can see light through. Now if it rips right away that means the gluten's not developed enough and you want to give it another minute or two of kneading. Our dough looks great so I'm going to spread it out on this oiled surface here might even add a little bit of flour. Look at that beautiful dough. It just looks so bouncy and smooth. And you notice it's still soft. Now I'm just going to give it a few turns by hand. Oiled palms there. And just a few Knead it by hand just briefly until it forms a nice smooth ball of dough. Make sure your hands are nicely oiled. Okay, there we go. It looks great. So I'll just put it in a 
generously buttered bowl and we'll cover it and let it rise until it is almost doubled. Well, our dough's been rising somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour and it looks like it's doubled. I'd like to take a minute and ask a favor of you. Would you click like and would you also consider subscribing? Thank you. So to check if the dough is risen enough, we're going to use the finger poke test. Just take two fingers and gently press the dough and wash those indentations. If the indentations remain, it means that your dough is done rising. If the dough springs right back to your hand, then you know it needs a little bit more time to rise. Give it another 10 minutes or so. There we go. Look at that beautiful blob of dough. Again, I'm gonna get some of that oil on my hands and then thoroughly flatten it out. You wanna get rid of all the big air bubbles that are in there. Now you can use your dough scraper to divide the dough in half because we're making two loaves. And you can do a little quick shaping just by folding it in thirds. Do the same for the second one. And then, I'm gonna pat those out again and, and roll them up to a nice loaf shape. See that? Now we just pop that in the prepared bread pan. There we go, we got one. Second one. There we go. Pinch those edges to seal. Flip it over so the smoother side is up. And you can give it a few little tucks to tuck in any stray edges. And then gently pick it up and settle it in your loaf pan. There we go. We've got two loaves ready to rise. We'll cover them and get our oven preheating. Right, we have two beautiful loaves ready to bake. If you're not quite sure if they are done rising, you can just do the touch test. Just gently touch the dough and remove your finger. And if you just barely see a fingerprint remaining, that means it's ready to go in the oven. All right, so we're gonna pop these in the oven and it's been preheated to 375 degrees. And we have the rack in the middle and we're gonna let those bake about half an hour and we'll have fresh hot bread. Look at our bread, it's out of the oven. The top crust is a deep dark brown and the bottom crust is a lighter, sort of a toasty golden color. That's just right. I've let them cool about half an hour. Normally you'd want to let your bread cool completely before you slice into it, unless you're going to serve the whole loaf all at once. But let's slice these and see what, what it looks like inside. All right, we've got a nice even crumb and it feels soft, delicious. And I think I'm gonna try a bite of some plum jam on top, that should be delicious. Mmm, mmm. That is so good. You're going to like it. I really enjoyed and felt honored to share my family's recipe for old fashioned buttermilk bread with you and I hope that you enjoy it as much as we do. Hopefully this recipe will help you help your family adapt to whole grain bread by using that sliding scale of starting with a little bit of whole wheat and then increasing the ratio until you can get all the way to whole wheat if you like. And you know what? Let me encourage you. If your family kind of stalls and you don't make it all the way to 100% whole wheat bread, that's okay too. You've still made a great improvement in their health and in the food that they're eating. So take joy in that. Good food should taste good. We should enjoy our food. Well, I hope this was helpful to you and 
I hope you enjoy using your KitchenAid mixer for lots of hearty, healthy baking. Thank you for joining me here in the kitchen at Chocolate Box Cottage. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.